ladies and gentlemen, I think joining us from, nope, just hung <laughs> up. We've had a little bit of a tech issue. We literally just had a three minute conversation with our next guest during the break. This man is a two time NFL MVP. He's a Super Bowl champion. He is a man that is revered as the greatest ball thrower to ever throw balls in the NFL. He throws the deep ball. He throws a beautiful ball. In Green Bay, Wisconsin, currently Super Bowl champion, number 12 for the undefeated Green Bay Packers, Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers. Wow. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? Nothing about the Baja Mar showdown. Oh, oh, and also <laughs> reigning uh, Baja Mar golf showdown hosted by Aaron Rodgers and Chris Paul that I was on his team, undefeated champion in golf. <laughs> Pretty good intro, right? Yeah, that was amazing, Pat. Thanks, buddy. Hey, um, congrats You're on You're looking good, too. Great haircut. Thank you so much, Aaron. I'm happy you noticed because uh, we have a guy that comes through the office. His name's Kay New. Uh, he just brings the things by. He's he's a great. He's a wizard with the hair. So I'm happy you noticed. I'll let him know too that he's Anytime, buddy. his Bob That's Ross right. work is really paying off. Um, you're undefeated on the season. Everybody can't hear him. Unbelievable. We were just about to get to it. I wasted too much time in the front there <laughs> when we had connection. <laughs> just kind of dancing around. I should have got right to it. Um. Andy's back, by the way. Andy's back. Just, yeah, just pick up. Just act like you, this question's kept going. Yeah, we just dumped it. Uh, I said a swear word there. Nobody even heard it. Uh, you're undefeated. Opening night, Chicago Bears, electric atmosphere. Uh, the first thing that you wanted to compliment directly after the game was the defense. It seemed like something you were very, very excited about. What do you see on the other side of the ball for the Packers this year that makes you like very excited about what's going to happen going forward? Well, I think we're just, we're just better on that side of the ball than we've been in the past. We got a couple great guys, last name Smith. You might have heard of them, Zedarius and Preston. We added to the mix. Got this guy named Amos. Might have heard of him. <laughs> Pretty Interception good to seal the game. <laughs> Pretty good little player. Uh, yeah, would have been better if you'd been on the other side, though, Puntine. But I, I did uh, – <laughs> Enjoy starting off the season 1-0. Oh. Um, <laughs> you started off a little rocky. Negative 12 yards in the first quarter, which led to everybody saying this. You've probably heard it. Everybody said this. Aaron Rodgers didn't play it down in the preseason, so that's why they were rocky to start. Is that how you feel? Or you said in the interview that the Bears' defense was an incredible defense. They're probably going to give a lot of people problems early. We thought we'd come out hot. I think that was the whole thing. We really want to come out the first quarter just blazing. You thought that was going to happen? No, that's what we did. <laughs> <laughs> I think the world saw that. Did you feel, though, what was the mindset whenever you decided not to play in the preseason? Was that just something like, hey, we're going to do this, we're going to take care of the body, or have a long season already? What was the thought going into that? Yeah, that wasn't my decision. He just... He said, you're not going to play the first one and try to play the second one. My back kind of locked up on me. Uh, so set me down for that one. The third one, you know, we had a little field issue in Canada. And the fourth one, he already said I wasn't playing. So ended up not playing any snaps. That never got said. That never got said. Everybody was making it sound as if you decided you weren't going to play in preseason. Because that's a new narrative is that guys don't want to play in the preseason. It never got said like, hey, they had an 80-yard field or something in uh, Canada. They did this. You got hurt. Was that you plan in the for, in the future you see preseason as a uh something that you would play in and you do like this isn't a decision forever i'm not saying that i'm fighting to play any snaps in the preseason <laughs> but if i'm if i'm told i need to play a series or a couple of series and you go out and play a couple of series you How do know you, Pat, that's the way it goes bro yeah literally i mean I had to play in the fourth preseason game, too, every single year. It was basically just a, a roll of the dice on whether or not I was going to get my leg broken uh, by a, a guy that was probably going to be playing in the CFL and a guy that was blocking for me that was definitely not going to be playing in the NFL. Uh, fourth preseason game was always a nightmare for me. How do you see your team going forward? You like what LaFleur uh, Laf, LaFleur? LaFleur. You like what LaFleur is doing out there? I do. He's taking a bunch of average Joes and 
and and really inspiring us to to be better you know <laughs> to be okay with ourselves first and to be like we are great already but then just kind of you know work on just the little things well sometimes you got to dodge <laughs> duck dip dive and dodge your way to victory in the NFL and at the beginning of your relationship with uh, Mr. LaFleur, uh, there was a lot of chatter because one misquote, I believe, where you weren't allowed to change the play at the beginning. Then after, then after it, was, it was a wild scene. That became a firestorm on the internet, by the way. Uh, then after the game, you guys had that magical moment that will live on forever in his career, literally for the rest of his career, his first win as a head coach you gave him the game ball it was like a magical moment it was a peak inside your relationship that hasn't been talked about since the firestorm happened how are you and lafleur coming uh coming together Dude, we gotta be going phone here, is there no sound there or was that the question i don't think it was the question to oh, be honest my god is his name lafleur yeah <laughs> him just rolling with a complete <laughs> dodgeball answer by the way is one of my favorite things yeah the whole world the whole world at the beginning was like, yeah, these two are going to hate each other. Uh, LaFleur's already saying that Aaron Rodgers can't audible. Aaron Rodgers can't change the play. And I would assume that was not how it all went down because I think even later LaFleur said, I would be uh, making a big mistake if I didn't let Aaron Rodgers make decisions. Yeah. So I'll be excited to hear if we ever get him back on what his answer is to that whole thing because nobody has talked about Aaron Rodgers and that guy getting along potentially. It's always been the opposite way. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's very, very hard to think that you have Aaron Rodgers, who's been incredible, but two-time two -time MVP, Super Bowl winner. Yeah. You're not going to let Aaron Rodgers make checks at the line. That, why wouldn't you? And, yeah. and I wonder why Aaron Rodgers always has this narrative that he, it's, there's drama around him, right? His brother goes on The Bachelor, and all of a sudden that gets spun into drama. And I think it's because he's so good. I think it's because he's so good, he's so, he, he's talked about by everybody, and he seems to be just this cool dude, but the media and him, I don't think have a great relationship. I think it's the indifference thing, too. Kill him with indifference. Yeah, like, it makes it seem like he doesn't care. Because he does about him. And that's what Cutler got killed for, too. He, was, yeah. he killed people with indifference, too. I mean, definitely not as good as Aaron Rodgers. There were a lot more interceptions, and... Looked like he didn't care on the sideline, but easy. The uh, Cutler didn't deserve that. No, no, he's you know, a he's, big time reality TV star. If I had TV to pick star. a best friend in my this entire world, it would be Jay Cutler. Yeah, you do love him. I would like to see Aaron Rodgers in a reality TV show post football. I bet you he would crush just like, just like Which, Jay Cutler is. Right? Oh, just like that type of reality show, not not on a reality show that already exists. Like he's not going on Survivor. No, Aaron <laughs> Rodgers is creating his. Uh, maybe I don't know. Maybe he would go on Survivor and win it. I assume he's a resourceful guy. Mm -hmm. Resourceful guy, smart guy. Is he on right now, Ty? Wow, oh, they're calling in now. We don't get the FaceTime, so I don't get to see him. I wonder if that's our fault. Who do you think's fault? That I, was? I would assume they have a really bad internet connection where he's at in that building. Well, it looks oh. like Todd's putting it on them. <laughs> yeah, you just immediately pointed fingers at the Green Bay Packers. Directly at LaFleur I mean, it worked right for, now. It worked with Triple H yesterday, so. And he was calling us from Madison Square Garden. Pretty old place, though. Yeah. So I don't know. Also a different place, though. I don't think there's cell phone towers in Green Bay, Wisconsin. That's what I'm <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Green Bay was a cool city. I got a go ch uh, chance to call that Lions-Packers yeah. game last year. Green Bay is a fun city. Outside the stadium, too, they got this entire, like, festival mm -hmm. that happens every single game. They got this Mason Crosby owns a bar right there on the corner. Well, I mean, it's a pretty it's awesome. It's by far the biggest thing in the city, so they should celebrate it every I think week. we have uh, an incredible football player back on the line. Aaron, are you there? Did you say Mason Crosby owns a bar? Yeah, it's right across the street from the stadium there. I was told right to my face that he does, unless they were just pandering to me. Is that accurate? I don't think that's accurate. <laughs> Bro, I went right into that game I was calling, too, and I dropped it, I think, middle of the second quarter. I was like, right across the street, got a beer at Mason Crosby's place. They're making so much money at that bar saying it's Mason Crosby's. Oh, man. <laughs> what, a, what a great idea. Uh, by the way, if you want to stop by Aaron Rodgers' bar here in Indianapolis, Indiana, <laughs> it's uh, right down the street. Hey, let's get back to this. This is a, uh, uh, I think you – haven't had the chance to talk about this, and you should. At the beginning of your relationship with Mr. LaFleur, 
the only thing that came out, it was negative. It was spun negative that he wasn't going to let you audible. And then that got a firestorm on the internet about everything. And you're always talked about by everybody. It's just the way it is. You're an incredible football player. And then after the game, you have that incredible moment where you hand him the game ball for his first head coach victory. It was like a nice peek inside your relationship with him. How is the team? How has it been with him? And uh, what are you excited about working with him moving forward? Yeah, it's been great. I mean, we spent a lot of time together. Uh, it's been a really, uh, really good partnership, you know, sharing uh, ideas and creativity. And obviously when you see the kind of work that he puts in, that gives gives some instant uh, kind of respect to the relationship because he is a grinder and, um, you know, he's, he's always, uh, you know, texting me or FaceTime me or calling me and it's like, you know, nine o'clock. I'm, you know, at my house, obviously, and I'm, and he's at the stadium. I'm like, go home, man. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but he's always, you know, uh, hey, what do you think about this? Or hey, what, you know, what about this? Or, hey, did you see this? So there's been a lot of great communication. It was fun, you know, when when uh, our defense, well, after J.K.'s punt, and then our defense, you know, holding them there on the last uh, last drive. I really, you know, just wanted to make sure I grabbed that ball because, uh, you know, like I said, you know, it's not every day you win your first NFL game as a as a head coach, and it doesn't matter if you're, you know, Matt Say's 39 or Vic Fangio is uh, 61, you know, first time head coaches. Uh, there's got to be something really special about that, knowing uh, all the hard work you put in over the years to kind of put yourself in this position to finally be the guy and. And, uh, you know, getting your first one is a pretty big deal. I am so happy to hear that, by the way. Just because of this, your career has been such an incredible one to watch. So many magical plays, magical moments. And then there was a transition phase there at the end of last year. Whenever I came into the city, into the building there for the Lions Packers and talking to everybody, the future was one that everybody was very excited about. So whenever the negative press came out early about you two, I think there was a lot of people who were like, damn, not this. And I'm so happy to hear that things are going to be great moving forward. You mentioned it, not me. You have 22 game-winning uh, drives in your career, 22. Peyton Manning is at the top of the thing with 50 or something something like that. I was on a couple of those teams. It was a cardiac situation every single game. It was like, who knows what's going to happen. But J.K. Scott now has one game-winning punt <laughs> under his belt. Would you like to comment about that? I just I can't believe the flexibility. I really can't. <laughs> <laughs> That's real. Like his, his foot, uh, his leg, that straight and that high. I mean, I've done a lot of yoga in my time, but uh, that looks painful to me. But, I, I, you know, you, uh, I think you made a disparaging remark about uh, how old he looks. Um, <laughs> so I want to give you a chance to apologize to J.K. if you want. Um, not saying you're wrong, but uh, <laughs> J.K. You know, I was, I was laughing with uh, with uh, you know, Tom, my uh, PR guy here. I said, you know, you know, it's a big day for the uh, defense and special teams when the punter has. Uh, has more cameras on him than uh, than I did at my press <laughs> conference. So. Uh, it's good for the yeah, brand. JK is a JK is a little different personality wise than you, Pat. But uh, <laughs> I'm sure you know. I've seen you. I've seen you make friends and get along with just about everybody except for Ray Allen. So I think you, you could probably get along with him. Hey, Ray. That golf tournament, by the way, that you and Chris Paul put on down the Bahamas, uh, you personally donated $10,000 to every single participant in that thing, and then it was matched by the Bahamar people. Uh, T's and P's, by the way, the Bahamas. Hope everything works out down there. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. that, that golf tournament that you put on for a good cause was a beautiful event. Everybody was so nice to me, uh, including Scotty Pippen, who dunked on me. But Ray Allen <laughs> just was not a fan, Aaron, just not a fan. Well, you can't please everybody, right, Pat? That's what they One of my favorite moments, though, was the uh, kind of the welcome dinner. <laughs> and I kind of came over to you and I said, hey, Pat, you know, no, you've been on tour. Would you stand up? Do you mind doing a couple minutes? And you were like, no, nah, not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> which is great, which is fine. But then I got up there. Chris and I were talking. And, you know, we're kind of going back and forth. And I'm introducing my team. And when I introduce, you know, Pat McAfee, you come right up, and not only did you do some stand-up, but you you got the crowd going. 
It was impressive. It gets the people going. You know, I don't even know what I said up there. Uh, what does that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> what type of music do you listen to? That makes me wonder now. What type of music do you listen to? Metal. Really? All day, every day? No. <laughs> oh, my God. I was, I was so mind blown right there. I was mind blown. Yeah, what, what do you listen to? What is, uh, I mean, you and your beautiful lady uh, seem to have an awesome relationship, by the way. She was down there cheering on everybody in the Bahamas. Seems to be going beautifully. But let's say you and Danica are hanging out at night. Uh, just kind of watching TV, maybe drink a little scotchy scotch down into the tummy tummy. You're listening to some music. What is it? Well, if I'm controlling it, it's definitely something from the 90s. Oh, okay. Yeah, big uh, big fan of that decade. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep in the 90s, you know, Foo Fighters, Nirvana, Pearl Jam. Keep it kind of in that, uh, you know, if we're listening to, the, you know, Spotify or Pandora, it's definitely on... You know, Eddie Vedder or Pearl Jam or Foo Fighters. Oh, my God. Uh, Ty Schmidt. Let it roll. Ty Schmidt, who you met down in the Bahamas, who is a uh, owner, shareholder of the Green Bay Packers, <laughs> who said right to your face that you have brought him more happiness in his life than his family has. Uh, he's losing his mind back there hearing uh, your music selection. I would like to let you know that. In a good way or a bad way? Oh, yeah. I didn't know I could love you anymore. And then I figured out how big of a Pearl Jam fan you are. And it's just, you know, it takes it over the top. Dying back here, Aaron. Dying. Mm, thank you. Yeah, big big Eddie fan, for sure. Hey, is that kind of weird being, uh, being just absolutely loved by an entire fan base? I, you... The Green Bay Packers fans are diehards. It was 31 nothing that Lions-Packers game. You got hurt second play uh, with... A, a, a big time hit. I mean, as soon as it happened, I was like, not good. Uh, that is not good news. But that place stayed filled the entire game all the way in through the end. The Green Bay Packers fans are such an incredible fan base. How has it been playing for a team that will always have your back? Because in a lot of places, their fans aren't that crazy unless they're doing well. Yeah, I mean, I've talked, I've talked at length uh, over the years about how special it is. I think the one thing that you can truly, truly respect and appreciate is the expectation. Because I know it's not like this in every city, but in Green Bay, uh, there's an expectation of greatness every year. And I think that uh, has been an important factor in uh, the excellence, sustained excellence in, in the history of our franchise is that there is – a constant expectation and appreciation for the greatness that's happened uh, over the years, 13 world championships, and, and obviously the, the names, Lombardi and Starr and Nitschke and Favre and on down the line. But playing in the city and, and for an organization that expects to win has got to be a lot more fun. I mean, I've only been here, but talking to other people, than playing in places where you know, making the playoffs is great or going 8-8 eight and eight is great or improving and rebuilding is the focus. Uh, we just don't uh, we don't operate that way in Green Bay, and I think that makes it a lot different. That's awesome. You and Favre uh, obviously have been through it, but watching you two interact down in the Bahamas was awesome. Uh, have you and Brett Favre had, like, quite a friendship build here, and is this a guy you talk to on a regular basis? Yeah, it's been great, man. It really has. It's it's been fun to fun to see that uh that change, you know, go from uh, teammates and be close to then we're kind of rivals as he's on uh, Minnesota and then uh you know, just the last couple of years I just been reaching out a little bit more and uh you know, we've been keeping in touch and it's been a lot of fun. I mean, I I have a, a ton of love for Brett and appreciation for his role. Uh, in my early development as a quarterback, and uh, it's just been great, you know. We we uh, you know we're talking you know at least once a week, and having him come down to the Bahamas was amazing. I went down there a couple years ago and spent some time with him at his house, and you know I just think that uh, him and I had uh, you know we met as kind of older quarterback and young quarterback. Um, and now kind of re-establishing the friendship as, as you know, retired legend and, and myself kind of now the older quarterback has been really fun to kind of see him through different eyes as I kind of understand him a little bit more 
uh, because I'm 35 now. I was drafted. He was 36. So, uh, you know, when you're 21 and you're playing with one of your favorite quarterbacks as a kid and a guy you looked up to, um, you know, I don't think until you get in this position can you really understand some of the thoughts and ideas that were going through his head as he's trying to hold on and keep playing and, and they just drafted this young kid and what does that mean for me? And So it's been fun to uh, just be friends again and, uh, you know, just give him the love and appreciation that uh, that he deserves for kind of the time we had together and and, uh, and just having him to bounce things off of. It's been really good. That was awesome. Hey, everything you just said there was absolutely awesome. A little old bull, young bull situation. <laughs> I like everything about that. And it makes a lot of sense, by the way. Because in the NFL, when somebody gets drafted into a position room, sometimes it depends on who the person is. They'll say, oh, he's refusing to help the young guy. He's refusing to help the young guy. Or this guy is overly helping the young guy. It's like there's a lot of things up for grabs in the NFL. And positions are not in abundance. So it's always interesting to see how those get played out. Um, Your mustache that you took for your media photos this year is one of the best mustaches I have ever seen in my entire life. Uh, would you like to elaborate on what makes your mustache better than everybody in the history of the NFL? Surface area. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think no, I mean, I, I think uh, the best mustache I've had in my life was probably uh, the one that I wore with the Canadian tuxedo oh. um, when we went to Winnipeg. Um, I really felt like, and I spent a little bit of time on that outfit, just put it together, um, and I felt like I got to a point, and I just knew something was missing. I had the stash. I had kind of the, you know, I was in between a couple of jean jackets. I felt good about the jeans and the boots, and then I found the bolo tie, <laughs> and I said, okay. Kind of like the rug in the dude's house, the bolo tie just kind of brought it all together. You know, just kind of brought the outfit together like that rug brought the room together, tied the room together. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And that mustache, anytime you can get it to cover your top lip, you know you got something going. Now, the, the, you know, kind of the only one I've seen that, that trumps that. I'm not saying my mustache against his. I'm just saying the mustache that's cover, that covers the top lip is Sam Elliott's mustache. Oh, and I've been a big proponent for years of him. Whatever movie it might be, it's made better when he's in it and has a mustache. A couple movies he's in that doesn't have a mustache in, not his best performances. But <laughs> <laughs> with the mustache, and, you know, Tombstone is a, is a favorite of mine. But his covers both lips, and that just, I mean, when you look up the definition of badass in the dictionary, it's a picture of Sam Elliott. As, as Virgil, in uh, Tombstone. Oh, if I was Sam Elliott, I'd put that on a quote. Put that in my Twitter bio yeah. immediately. Uh, I'm not sure if he has Twitter or not. That mustache. They just put a picture of it up where he's holding a revolver in his hat. His top hat game is a little bit better than what you had going on in Winnipeg, but that mustache is a thing of beauty. Upper lip decoration is just a fantastic thing for anybody to rock. I have adolescent pubic, pubic hair on my face, <laughs> much like J.K. Scott, so I can't pull it off. I'm incredibly jealous. I think you got J.K. beat. I, I agree. I, I don't mean, think he's shaving yet. I don't think he's shaving yet. Hey, you said it, not me. Uh, you said it, not me. Did? But he's a dad, so he's got that on you. He procreated. Yep. Hey, good for J.K. Scott. Hey, hey, hey! Big year for him. Yeah, big year for him. Uh, for you guys, you got a pretty big test coming up this weekend. Uh, the Vikings, if I'm recalling correctly, uh, big talk show host did a lot of research there. Uh, they looked good. <laughs> they looked good early. Vikings, obviously, in the division, big deal. Um, what's the work week look like this week, and what what can we plan for this weekend? And I know you can't talk about it, but I bet on you guys to win the Super Bowl, so uh, pretty excited to see that all work out as well. Oh, yeah. Did you, huh? Yeah, I did. I did. Us and the 31 other teams? <laughs> what you say? I'm sorry. I missed you right there. I was being told we have to go to a commercial break right now, but oh, we're going to push God. it in four minutes. Uh, what you say about that? I'm the- not sure what the question was, but I'll just say that... Uh, Wait, what was the question? Uh, how are you guys going to do this weekend? Uh, oh, Minnesota, yeah. Yeah, they're a great team. Uh, coach Zimmer, you know, fantastic coach. Yep. Got a lot of great personnel. You know, stud stud guys up front, Hunter and Griffin, stud guys inside. 
two great linebackers in, in their nickel package, guys that can cover. On the other side of the ball, obviously they got Kirk, great player. They running back, you know, had a big game to start. He's whenever he's been healthy, he's been really, really tough. And then you have two of the top, you know, receivers, one of the top tandems for sure, and uh, our teammate and phenomenal golfer, phenomenal golfer, phenomenal. Adam Thielen. Phenomenal. Uh, hey, he no, hit his three wood two eighty or, or three hundred yards. I watched it. He carried us to a tie. It was unbelievable. Mm, what a tie! Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> How do you but, feel about uh, and, that? Hey, hey, real quick, while I have you here, and you just did a full breakdown of the Vikings, how do you feel about the tie in the NFL? Arizona Cardinals, Detroit Lions. Here's my answer. i got to get it in quick. I think it's two-point play. Offense, your offense is on one side. Their offense is on the other side, competing against the defense, shootout style. If it's tied after five, have the kickers come out and bang field goals right next to each other, just like a shootout. You like that overtime offer? Yeah. I mean, the college one isn't bad either, though. Yeah, I do kind of like it. It takes out punters completely, but so would the two-point play thing, so I guess. <laughs> no, punters, you, you got to hold, right? You're right. Hey, 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 I didn't even think about it. You're 100% on, right. Bro. Yeah, it means a lot. You're right. Uh, Mr. Rogers, we have to get to a commercial break, I'm being told. I've been yelled at four times during this thing uh, from the Westwood One people. But I want to let you know, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. You don't do this a lot. You're magical in here. And uh, good luck the rest of the season, not just for my wallet, but uh, also for your success as well. Thank you, Pat. You're a gentleman and a scholar. I dropped out uh, of college, <laughs> but uh, ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers. Thank you so much, Aaron. We got to get to a couple breaks. That was awesome. Thank you, guys. Awesome. That was awesome. He's the best. I mean, the tech didn't work there early, but we got some good. He's the best.